Frank Goyer, who is known affectionately online as Crank That Frank, created his channel in January of 2009 and deleted his entire online existence sometime in 2022. Social Blade last counted his YouTube statistics on April 21st of 2022. But why would someone with 700,000 subscribers at their peak just disappear? It turns out it was seemingly a long time coming. This is the online disappearance of Crank That Frank. Frank started out his venture onto the internet as a Viner in 2013, technically. After MySpace of course, that being where the username came from. With many if not all still publicly available on Vine. He, as many before him did, started moving over to YouTube to make longer form content. His first video was entitled, My First Video Serial Can Save the World, which was uploaded on September 21st, 2013. Unfortunately, a copy of it, to my knowledge at least, doesn't exist. But the thumbnail does, so here's that. There's also a brief clip of the video in The Drug History of Crank That Frank, which has since been re-uploaded online. A lot of his videos have been lost since he deleted his channel, but the vines offer some insight into the content, or at least personality at the time. In my research, I found a video of him from November 2013, which was the earliest YouTube video I could find in full. It was a video with Ever, who we'll talk about a bit later in the video, and the video was called Photo Booth Challenge. Fortunately though, there's a record of almost every video, but the majority don't have the thumbnail visible, nor are they viewable. I was able to find the photo booth challenge via a VK page about Frank from around that time and then putting the video links into the Wayback Machine. The photo booth challenge was a good indication of Frank's content at the time. It was basically a lone American version of the Brick Crew of old, doing challenges, story times and advice videos, on YouTube at least. The first Wayback Machine archive of his channel comes from April 2014, with nothing being viewable outside of the profile picture and the banner. But it does offer a little insight into a series that he was making that would be his first real foray into an original series. The video of My Favourite Anime started a series called Anna Monday. It also shows that he used to call his fans Franksters. Anna Monday was seemingly sponsored by Crunchyroll, at least a few of the episodes I found were, and lasted an unknown amount of episodes, but there were at least 10. These being the aforementioned My Favourite Anime video, along with two Sword Art Online videos, and the videos going over Death Note, Sailor Moon, Ruby, Hunter Hunter, Tokyo Ghoul, and Parasite. The series finished in early 2015. 2014 also saw the start of the Reading Effed Up fan fiction and Reading Effed Up tweet series, which also didn't seem to last too long either. Those series, along with him trying his hand at gaming, were all pretty much dead in the water around 2016. In 2015, Frank's variety content would hit a sweet spot with the collection of people known as Fan, E H A N, fans of Dan Howe and Phil Lester, also known as Dan and Phil or Dan is Known Fire and Amazing Phil, as everyone had quirky names back then. Frank had worked his way into the fandom in 2015 after discovering them through Tumblr. Sometimes afterwards, as both Frank and Dan used You Now, which we'll talk about later, Frank became the top fan of Dan, which I assume is a way of saying he gave him the most money in a set period. Dan responded to this live on You Now and even quote unquote watched him, to which Frank posted to his channel. A month and a half after he posted that video, Frank had gone from 42k subs to 188. Thousand. Although views of that video are hard to pinpoint due to the current state of the channel, it being deleted I mean. At least in regards to the jump from 42k to 188k, as it does appear in a popular videos later. In fact, he was posting so much about it that when you google crank that Frank, Dan and Phil, two Twitter results come up complaining about him and using them for views. Regardless of this, Frank got a huge influx of followers to his YouTube channel, but he wasn't a fake fan. He even went to a book signing for their book and met them. He was nominated as You Now of the Year at the 8th Annual Shorty Awards. He lost to the Merrill Twins, if you were wondering. The About Frank section reads as follows and can still be viewed online. Frank Goya, aka Crank That Frank, likes to make you smile, beginning his online career in 2013 crafting YouTube videos from his New Jersey bedroom. Frank's entertaining daily video blogs, advice segments, and popular torture challenges, such as eating the world's largest gummy worm, 
They've charmed and grown his online community, with more than 84,000 YouTube subscribers, hundreds of thousands of Vine and Twitter fans, and 1 million Instagram followers. Frank joined you now in partnership with the Huffington Post for his livestream show, Being Frank with Crank That Frank. Recently named a You Now hashtag alternative editor's choice. That You Now show with Huffington Post, according to DigiDay at least, was a weekly advice show. Also, yes, to clarify, the award was presented in 2016 when he, in fact, had more than 84,000 subscribers. The Shorty Awards mentions 84,000 subscribers, but at the start I mentioned 700,000. Let's take a look at what made Frank even more popular on YouTube. Unfortunately, other sites like You Now don't really have archives of such, so it's difficult to find footage from them outside of YouTube compilations. While challenges were generally a mainstay during Frank's entire time on YouTube, so was series, but a few in particular launched his channel into a new realm of popularity. At around 100,000 subscribers, Frank made a video entitled Try Not To Laugh Emo Edition. Through 2016, he really lent into the whole emo thing, and it really worked for him. Although, admittingly, his most viewed video at the time, and potentially ever, was the Dirty Truth or Dare. It was later taken down and cannot be seen in the most popular videos from 2020 onwards. He also did a reaction to Poppy at one stage too. On July 29 of that same year, he uploaded the first episode of his Try Not To Cringe Emo Musically Challenge series, which would rack up 400,000 views in 7 months, and soon enough he was doing them once a week. Despite the popularity of the series, it was retired when musically rebranded into TikTok. I don't have a definitive number of musically cringe episodes, but the save of a video from late 2018 shows that there were at least 56. The video where it shows that at least 56 were made was the recommended of a video that was of course the first episode of the TikTok Try Not To Cringe series, which didn't last as long. Towards the end of 2016, he started a series of reactions called Reacting to Emo Bands on Crack, which was another long-running series of his, with 67 episodes made, with there only being 3 episodes in 2019 and the last 2 being in 2020, which we'll talk about soon. And yes, that series is the core reason why I made my Poppy Marzago on Crack videos all those years ago. Other notable series from around that time were Try Not To Get Angry Challenge and Reacting To Songs I've Never Heard Before, which both lasted a few episodes. There were also false accusations that were made against him, I won't go into detail but I just wanted to mention it very briefly so you know that I'm not just avoiding it. He also did a tour in 2018 called The Kinda Emo Tour with his at the time girlfriend Eva. He had gone from 300k subscribers in early 2017 to, by mid-2020, more than doubling that and surpassing 700,000 subscribers. And then he quit YouTube. But that isn't where the video title comes into play. Let's talk about why he quit and what led up to it. I would like to draw attention to three specific videos. Why I stopped making emo videos from April 2019, along with I'm quitting YouTube and I quit YouTube and this happened from 2020. Why I stopped uploading also fits into this section, but I can't find a copy of it so I can't talk about it unfortunately. Why I stopped making emo videos went over why Frank stopped making emo centered videos, as the title suggests. He mentions that around the time the video was uploaded, he was getting 1-3 to three videos a day copyright claimed. But at a point, he had over 100 videos copyright claimed, meaning that the series he had made, like the aforementioned emo bands on crack and try not to cringe musically series, were making him absolutely no money anymore. He goes into detail about how it was manually detected and people going after his videos from the labels and aren't taking fair use into consideration at all, which to be fair to Frank, is still an issue. They were even doing it over a single second of a song. He also talks about the risk of fighting these unjust copyright claims and how it could lead to his channel being terminated if he fights them. That they could strike him instead of a copyright claim, they'd file a copyright strike instead, and that he could lose his channel as a result. This video and copyright claims basically killed every long running series he had, although he did try to combat it with videos like Guess the Emo Songs from Three Words. He had to change his content because he was essentially forced to because of the copyright landscape in 2019. Although I did previously mention that he did make two emo bands on crack videos in 2020. 
Ang Kui in YouTube, unlike every other video, perfectly explains why he disappeared. In the video, he explains that he's having a month of social media, that he wants and needs to quit YouTube. That although his content doesn't reflect it, he's very unhappy and his mental health is in a bad place. And he feels as if he can't make the videos people want because of that. He was hopeful that time off would help with that feeling. He felt pigeonholed into making emo videos even though it felt like a chore to him. It had got to the point where he was essentially masking his personality, that his content hadn't changed since 2016. It all just came to a head at the point of that video. He also stated the negative effect that Twitter had had on him over time, which I could probably go more in depth about, but I won't. I'm sure you can probably find all about it if you look. But the video also said that he had something coming out on the 5th of May, which is where the next video, I Quit YouTube and This Happened, comes into play. I Quit YouTube and This Happened was essentially a Q&A, but it wasn't a month after, it was two months. As a horrible event happened on the 5th of May that led to Frank respectfully pushing back the Tease project, which, by the way, was his band. He made a band called Vanta Void. He stated that he was feeling better mentally after his break. He also stated that he couldn't see himself coming back to YouTube the same way as before, and that he was trying to please the algorithm even though it became detrimental to his own mental health. He also said that he didn't want to abandon the channel even outside of putting the band's music on his main channel. He still wanted to make content, but he'd be stepping away from emo content. Although he continued to upload a few songs from the band prior to the channel's deletion, there wasn't another video of him just sitting and talking. He did keep streaming on Twitch after this video for almost a year, with his last stream being April 4th, 2021. I don't know anything about why he stopped streaming, and I don't think there's any accounts as to what happened either, so I can't shine a light onto that. But I would assume that he stopped enjoying it too, unfortunately. But here's the last clip of him on Twitch, the most recent one. All the mods here right now play Minecraft, bestie. Help me. Help me, please. Help me, please. Make a fiver. Is it bad that I'm starting to say water like you do? No, it's the correct way. It's the correct way. Water? 100% the correct way. And I will never stop saying it like that. While I was researching this video, I came across a comment on another video. I like to search videos I'm making to make sure I'm not essentially remaking someone else's video. And I found that no one had deep dived into this specifically. But there was one video that I'll leave in the description called Whatever Happened to Crank That Frank? Comment reads as follows. Hi, Frank's editor here. I edited for him between 2019 and 2020 and the first video I edited for him was when he played Minecraft for the first time. That dude was so unhappy being on the internet, it genuinely took a bad toll on him. He got constant hate online, Twitter especially, and it made him so damn miserable. He used to stream a lot on Twitch and I even saved some of his Twitch highlights in my archive channel. It's just unfortunate that he decided to delete every trace of his existence. His entire YouTube channel is now gone, his Instagram, Twitter, everything. It seems like he wants to be forgotten almost. His Van der Void seems to be an abandoned project now. I don't think he'll be forgotten though, especially with how much of an impact he's had on the emo scene. I doubt he'll ever return, but it's honestly for the best. He's living his best life. He's getting married to Eva, which is awesome and is going to be in private from now on. That comment was from 10 months ago. I really wanted to dedicate a section of this video purely to Eva as she was around the whole time and his partner the whole time as well. There were a lot of collabs on Frank's channel with her, with the first one being the Chubby Bunny Challenge, and she was even in some of his old vines. She hadn't uploaded in a couple of years herself up until she recently started posting YouTube shorts. It's said that they got married at some stage after his last YouTube video, but have since divorced. The Instagram for their cats still exists though. Frank has deleted all of his social media accounts currently except for his Twitch, but I don't imagine he'll go back to it anytime soon. Although the social media accounts for Vantavoid are still online and were even active as recently as December last year. They also have a YouTube channel, so if you're hoping for Frank content, that's probably your best bet.